Hey folks, I am the Mighty Plantain, and we are checking out one of my favorite seasonal packs, usually, from Sam Adams. This is the Fall Variety Pack. Fall and Winter, two of my, great, my favorite seasons for beer. Fall and Winter Variety Packs from Sam Adams, two of my big, big favorites. So, uh, this year, we've got Boston Lager, of course, Oktoberfest, as always, Pumpkin Ale, which, um, honestly... I think is what they used to call Harvest Pumpkin Ale. I can't think of anything else it is because it's not listed as new. And the only other, they've had pumpkin ale, they've had 20 pounds of pumpkin or 10 pounds of pumpkin or whatever that one was. And um, I think this is gonna be Harvest Pumpkin Ale just with the harvest removed from the name. Don't quote me on that, I'd have to look into it. Black Lager, which I'm pretty sure we've seen before, Spruce Lager. I'm actually excited about this one. They actually use spruce tips, and if my memory serves me correctly, they paired with, or partnered with a, um, a firm or a, a school here in Maine for collecting the spruce tips used in the lager. And then the Coffee Pale Ale. So, I believe the Spruce Lager and the Coffee Pale Ale are the two new varieties. I'll have to double check that they, they used to just put new variety on the, on the box I wish they'd go back to that because I liked being able to you know reference that anyway um, so uh, for the order we're gonna switch it up I'm gonna go as we go I believe I've got pumpkin that Oktoberfest I can't remember if I put the Boston or the black next um, but then spruce lager and the coffee pale ale. I put the spruce before the coffee pale ale because depending on the hoppiness of the pale ale and the bitterness of the coffee, they could override the flavor of the spruce if we do that first. Eh, it, uh, I'm kind of in the woods here on these, so because I've never had the, uh, the spruce of the coffee before and the black lager is a little bit of an unknown because it's been a while since I've had it. I might not even be stuck in that lineup. I'll let you know as the video goes um, if I've changed it up at all. Hell, I might not even stick to that. I might just let you know which one's next as I go. Um, sorry, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. Um, also, I usually review these in the Sam Adams Perfect Pint Glass, but guess what? <laughs> I'm in the middle of moving. So those Perfect Pint Glasses are in a box somewhere two towns over because we're moving some shit ahead of time so that we don't have to do it all at once. Um, thankfully, I have that luxury. But anyway, um, I figured I wasn't going to be doing any beer reviews for a couple of weeks, and I'd just post the ones that I have already filmed, but I came across this sooner than expected, and i got to get this done and posted as soon as possible. Some of the others, um, for those of you who are still watching, this part of the video and haven't just skipped ahead to where I, uh, I'm drinking the first beer. You're gonna see some videos in this setting, you'll see some videos in an interim setting, and you'll see some videos from the new house all kind of mixed together at different times because I've got at least 80 reviews filmed already and, and sitting waiting to be posted because every time I come across an interesting beer I'm like oh let's get that on camera let's get that on camera and then I, I don't post them all so again you might see a mashup over different periods of time in different videos and different settings depending on when I post them or at some point I might just purge all the old ones and start over again so that all you see is videos from the new setting and by purge I mean post um, Anyway, I'll try to give you a heads up on that, but all that aside, I don't know if anybody really gives a crap about that, um, or if it's even that important. It's also why I'm wearing an older shirt with a stain on it, grease stain from the Sam Adams Brewery that smells like my kid left it in the fucking washer for too long before putting it in the dryer. It's a little musty. Um, so my really cool t-shirts that I usually wear. Yeah, I'm the only one who thinks they're really cool, I know. They're um, packed away and ready to go. So anyway, all that aside, here's the part of the video you've really been waiting for. We're going to review this beer, 
We're going to be drinking it for those reasons directly that I mentioned directly out of the bottle. We have the pumpkin ale. So obviously I'm not going to be giving you any notes on the color or appearance of the beer. Yes, even my regular pint glasses are all packed up. I was looking for anything I could use to pour this into, and I got nothing. We're drinking out of solo cups here, folks. At least for a couple of weeks. A little bit of hint of pumpkin. Not too strong. That's definitely not the Harvest Pumpkin Ale. This might be a different take on it. Um, it's close in terms of the pumpkin flavor and the overall consistency and texture of the beer. The, well, the pumpkin flavor is there. It mostly tastes like the um, their Oktoberfest. I don't think that's what it is, though. I think it's, it's a different ale than the, than the Mars and Style Oktoberfest. But um, it's just a nice, solid, beery beer with hints of pumpkin flavor, uh, a little bit of that uh, that watery pumpkin. I don't know if you have ever smelled or tasted the pulp of the pumpkin before. It's got a lot of hints of that. Some roasty notes and a little hint of some of those pumpkin pumpkin spices that you've come to expect from pumpkin flavored beers, pumpkin and pie and that sort of stuff. But it doesn't have that slight hint of sweetness or the um, the overall fall spice flavor of the Harvest Pumpkin Ale. It's basically just a nice solid beer with hints of pumpkin and a little bit of spice in the, in the finish. It's got a nice um, medium mouthfeel, a good warming effect. Uh, right now it's August, but I tell you what, I'll be, I'd be looking forward to this on a, a crisp, cool October night, Halloween especially. Overall, it's a pretty solid offering. There's nothing really crazy or outstanding about it though, it's just a decent, solid pumpkin ale. It's not blowing me away or impressing me, but I am going to hit this with a three and a half out of five. And I'll try to say this just once in this video. Bear in mind on a scale of one to five, a two and a half is an average beer. So at three and a half, this is a nice above average offering. Like I said, there's just nothing really stand out about it. It's got a decent pumpkin flavor, but it's not really pumpkin forward. The pumpkin flavor is just kind of there, as well as a bit of some fall spices. Nothing really negative to say about it. It's just not impressing me by standing out or being different. But again, it's a really nice solid above average beer to three and a half out of five. So I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to move on to the next one. We'll, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with the Oktoberfest, but we'll see. Well, that didn't take as long as I hoped it would. Uh, play a little bit of Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, matches in between drinking these beers and I have a bad habit of every time I die taking a nice big sip I die a lot <laughs> not that good folks and it only gets worse the more beer I drink so it's kind of a bad cycle but anyway uh, one of the reasons I don't stream as often as I'd like is uh, well let's just list a few reasons one the bad habit of drinking too much while I stream and I'm not that good at the games to begin with, so I get worse. Two, not as many people as I thought would tune in actually do. TJ, thanks for being there all the time. I love it. Um, but the audience just isn't there. I don't seem to think there's that much interest, less interest than there is in my beer reviews. And uh, three, most of the nights that I do decide to stream are the same nights that I decide to film beer reviews, so I'd constantly have to be interrupting the stream to come over here and do a review and it doesn't work out well but uh, yeah, we'll see living situation is changing the streaming situation may change so 
Man, I am rambling a lot and going off on some tangents tonight, so thanks for bearing with me. But, St. Adam's Oktoberfest is next up. Now, um, if you've seen any one of the videos that I've done the fall varieties before in from Sam Adams, this no surprises here for you. I'm pretty sure it's going to fall around the same as it did before. Oh, quick note on the pumpkin ale. Some of the pumpkin spices and the different uh, fall spices did start to kick in closer towards the end of the beer, which gave it a little more character. Still a three and a half out of five. Didn't give it enough to change the rating for me, but it did have a little more character towards the bottom of the bottle than it did at the beginning. And so again, I'm missing those glasses because giving it a nice good pour would get all that stuff that might have settled in the bottom of the bottle flowing up and around. So um, we'll try and tip aggressively from now on to get the same effect, <clears throat> at least for this video. Hopefully I'll have those stupid boxes unpacked soon. Anyway, I get more aroma out of the glass than I do out of the bottle from the Oktoberfest especially. There's usually a nice, uh, almost smoky, dry, leafy, aroma to it based on the fall spices and the and the malt blend i'm not getting much of that at all right now just a very faint hint but that is a nice solid oktoberfest beer it's got those fall spices it's got that hint of fall air about it i don't know how else to describe it but you know, standing around on a lawn full of leaves in the fall, there's a certain scent in the air. And you get that impression from a good fall beer, especially a nice Oktoberfest. Um, got a nice medium mouthfeel, roasty, slightly spicy, those fall spices kicking in. Um, and then on the exhale, like I said, that nice hint of leafy fall air. It's good beer. It's um, it's a great Oktoberfest. And for me, not too long after I started getting into the more diverse craft beers, I started to realize that this is a nice yardstick to measure other Oktoberfest beers against because it's not as wild or as crazy as some of the others in terms of flavor or substance or what's in there, but it is a solid, consistent Oktoberfest beer. And if you start drinking some of the others, you can look at it and say, you know, the Sam Adams is pretty run of the mill for Oktoberfest. It's good and it's consistent, but this one has some other flavor that sets it apart. So, again, I love the fall beers, I love the Oktoberfests, and I love the Sam Adams Oktoberfest for me. Today, it's falling at a 4 out of 5. It kind of runs the gamut between a 4 and a full 5 out of 5, just depending on what mood I'm in, honestly. But, right now, we're at a 4 out of 5. If I was sitting around a damn fire in a nice fire pit outside, in actual crisp fall weather, it would probably bump this up to the full 5 out of 5 because of the experience and the setting. The right beer for the right setting, folks. Sometimes it makes all the difference in the world, but on any given day of the week, month, or year, it's at least a 4 out of 5 for me because I love the same Adam's Oktoberfest. And right now on a fairly warm summer night, because it is getting towards the end of August, but it's still summer. It's sitting at a 4 out of 5. So, uh, I'm going to finish this one up. We'll move on. I believe I've got the Black Lager up next. And mostly because after the Black Lager, we're going to get into Boston Lager, which is a little hoppier and has higher IBUs than the Black Lager, which is the only reason I'm drinking it before. Pardon after the black lager and then we've got the spruce and the coffee pale ale which I think are going to have some unique flavors that I wouldn't want to put ahead of these but that's just my thinking I'll try to keep the tangents to a minimum after this 
But it depends on how fast I get my ass kicked on the game. Because that beer's going to disappear pretty fast tonight, I think. <laughs> well, that beer didn't last nearly as long as I hoped it would either. So, we are on to the Black Lager. So says here, it's crisp and dark with hints of cocoa. Pretty sure this has been released a few times before and that I've had it before. But we're still going to drink it because it's part of the fall variety pack. And come on, if I'm right about this and it's the same one I'm thinking that I've had before from Sam Adams, the Black Lager is pretty Pretty damn good. Maybe some smoky, toasty notes coming up through the neck of the bottle, but nothing really much for aroma. God, I'm missing those glasses. I promise we're going to move as fast as we can and get the house set up as fast as we can so I can unpack those glasses and start drinking from them again as soon as I can. Nice medium mouthfeel. So far most of these have been kind of middle of the road in terms of mouthfeel. Not too light, not too heavy. Just there, nice and solid. Some really roasty notes. Into smokiness in the finish. But you can tell it's definitely based on a, um, a heavily roasted malt. Maybe a hint, just a tiny hint of hoppy bitterness there. 19 IBU, so it's not too high in the hop category. Mostly just getting. A nice toasted lager, smoky, smoky taste. Nothing too crazy, nothing too wild. This is another perfect campfire beer. It's got nice, the, the medium mouthfeel is. is Describing the texture of the beer, but it's got a nice heavy feel as it rests in your stomach. It's got a bit of heaviness to its character. I, I don't know, that probably doesn't make any sense. The beer itself has a nice medium mouthfeel because it's it's got some body to it, but not a, too much. But it feels heavier as you drink it in terms of character, and it rests nice and heavy in the stomach. Ooh, pardon, but it's got some nice roasty, toasty, smoky notes. Again, not another beer that's really a big standout. No crazy flavors, just really well put together, nice and solid. Great campfire beer. I'm going to hit this one with three and a half out of five as well. Like I said, it's just a really nice, really solid, above average, well put together beer. There's nothing standing out from it or, or really going, making me go, wow, or really impressing me about it. I mean, I'm impressed by how good it is, but I'm just not getting anything unique or different or crazy about it. Um, but again, the nice, really solid black lager. Smoky, roasty, and toasty. Um, I'm going to finish this one up and we'll move on. We're going to do Boston Locker next. No surprises there either. <laughs> Alright, so next up, Sam Adams Boston Lager. This is another beer that has no surprises for you regular viewers. You know what I think about it. Chances are. My opinion's not gonna change tonight, so. Mm. Mm -mm. 
There's a little bit of hoppiness actually coming through in the aroma, even through the bottle. Not much else, just a general beery aroma. The hint of hoppiness. There it is, the roasty, malty, got a nice medium mouth feel. A hint of hoppiness coming through in the finish, just a tiny bit of sweetness there too. This is always a full five out of five for me. Not necessarily because there's any particular standout flavor or or one particular aspect that blows me away. But like some other beers that I've reviewed and that I drink on a regular basis, the Sam Adams Boston Lager is this nice, well-rounded, perfect beer. And um, that's another, like the Oktoberfest, it's a great yardstick to measure other beers up against. I know there are some who will say that this particular beer doesn't rate that high because it's billed as a certain style and it doesn't necessarily taste wise fall into that style category but I think they'd call it like a Belgian lager etc something like that but taking the style aside because you could call this a stout for all I care you could call it a pale ale or an IPA you could call it a, a porter or a sour I don't care what you call it the beer itself is perfectly balanced perfectly well-rounded it's got a great combination of malt backbone with this hoppiness a great mouth feel the, just the overall grainy texture and flavor of the beer it's just perfect it's got all of the aspects that I'm looking for in a beer in just the right quantities that it, it comes together so well and it's a great beer anytime anywhere always pardon and just for that reason it is a perfect five out of five for me every single time so i'm gonna try to savor this but if it goes down like the other three it's going to disappear faster than I want, <clears throat> but I'm going to try to savor it, and then we'll move on to, we'll do the spruce locker next. Alright, next up is the spruce locker. First of the two new beers in this pack, or new as far as I can tell. Now the reason I put the spruce locker ahead of the coffee pale ale, a couple of reasons actually. Spruce Lager is coming in at 14 IBUs, and the Coffee Pale Ale is coming in at 20 IBUs. So, actually both significantly lower than Boston Lager's 30, which means neither one is a particularly hobby beer. Spruce, in my experience, the one spruce-based beer that I've had before from Dogfish Head um, Pennsylvania Tuxedo, is not quite as bitter or overwhelming in flavor as either a hoppy or a coffee flavored beer. Coffee tends to have a bitterness to it that's on par, at least in terms of covering other tastes as uh, with hops. So that's my reasoning for putting the spruce lager first. If you've got a different opinion, hit me up in the comments and the email link down below. Um, also, I'd like to hear what you think about these beers down there. Ooh, pardon. Whether you agree or disagree with my assessment of any of them. The uh, comments and the email link is a great place to discuss that with you. I am definitely getting the spruce aroma. It's really interesting. It's it's similar to pine, but it's distinctly different. Um, spruce versus pine, it's less of a cutting aroma. 
and more of a freshness to it uh, a little more earthy and um, earthy and maybe it may be a slightly bit mintier than pine whereas pine tends to have like this this chemical overtone and I'm I'm not talking about just pine floor cleaner I'm talking about freshly cut pine pine boughs uh, pine needles versus spruce needles if you take them and you just give them a good crushing and smell the oils um, and I'm really definitely getting that fresh spruce oil out of this Yeah, brewed with spruce tips with spruce tips added. <laughs> and as I said, I'm pretty sure I'd have to look up the um, the news article, but I'm pretty sure they partnered with a local main school, like a college, to acquire the spruce tips that they use in the beer. And I also remember somebody telling me about it. Um, Bill G. By the way, big thanks for uh, bringing this to my attention. Um, Somebody else emailed me a link. I believe it was TJ. Um, emailed me a link to it as well around on the same day. Um, <laughs> I actually had somebody try and get me a hold, get a hold of one of these for me. I didn't realize that they were going to release this outside of the pack, but apparently they're serving it as, as uh, single servings at least on the Amtrak Nor'easter between Portland, Maine and Boston, Mass. But I guess they don't want you leaving the train with the beer because they open it for you when they hand it to you. Yeah, uh, same guy, Bill G, tried to get me a hold, uh, get a hold of one of these for me, but they opened it up and it's like, well, I ain't bringing it to him now because it's going to go flat. Uh, just more examples of the liquor police trying to keep you from drinking where you want to drink. We'll talk to Dick Masterson about that. Check out thedickshow.com. Great podcast. Thedickshow.com. If you put in dickshow.com, you're going to get a very different web page. And an neat little podcast. Anyway, um, I promise to keep the tangents to a minimum here. And I didn't. <sighs> Yeah, getting that very, very fresh spruce aroma out of that. I actually got a medium light mouthfeel off of that. It's actually a little lighter in mouthfeel than the other beers in this pack so far. It's got this crisp, refreshing flavor to it. got a distinct malt backbone but it's it's like a hoppy beer with a woodsy finish to it um, and when I say like a hoppy beer I mean it's similar in the way it behaves where it gives you up front this basic beer flavor I said fairly light, crisp, and refreshing, but then it fades and gives way to this um, this emerging flavor of spruce. And yes, it's faintly reminiscent of pine, but um, if you live around the, the trees, you know there's a subtle difference between the two. The spruce tends to be that slightly more earthy, less chemical taste, more fresh. And that's really coming through in this beer. It's got a distinct spruce flavor to it. And the beer is there, but it doesn't interfere with that spruce flavor. It's interesting. It's different. Uh, 
would have liked to have seen a little more hoppiness, some different flavor notes to kind of complement and balance that and, and maybe even bring out more of the spruce flavor. And it's possible that there is a hop blend in there that's designed to complement the spruce flavor, but it's not really making it stand out anymore. It's just kind of there along with it. Um, as like I said, I'm, I'm getting a really great malt and beer backbone and then just the spruce coming through. And nothing much else. So it's different. It's not necessarily unique. Like I said, we've had uh, Pennsylvania Tuxedo from Dogfish Head and there's a handful of other spruce beers out there. I even think I've had a third one of them but any particulars escape me right now. I can only remember that Pennsylvania tuxedo. This is on par with that. Mm, pardon. Like I said, it's distinct, it's different. It's not necessarily unique, but it's not common either. I'm going to hit this with a four and a half out of five. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking it. Again, it's it's not making me go, wow, that's new, that's different. I've never had that before. I think if this was the only spruce beer out there, it would hit that 5 out of 5 category for me just for being so different. But knowing that I've had one bring this into a similar light to that, and also um, knowing there are others out there, I think he's putting this in a solid four and a half out of five. It's just not quite pushing that boundary of making me go, wow. But it's an awesome, well put together beer. So I'm going to finish it up and we're going to move on to the coffee pale ale. Um, and last off, to finish up this pack, oh, pardon, that one hit me unexpectedly. We've got the uh, coffee pale ale. Uh, it says here, rich coffee flavor with a smooth finish. Well, I guess we'll find out. 20 IBUs. Like I said, that's why I got uh, moved up behind the spruce lager. Not as much of a coffee aroma as I would have thought. In fact, it's actually surprisingly subtle. Hmm. Well, they got a picture of a, a hop cone floating in the cup of coffee there, so I'm thinking I was right. They're gonna, they would have hopped this up a bit. And it's definitely hoppy, but it's also got a good coffee flavor to it. I should got a bit of a medium light mouthfeel. Up front, this nice liquid cereal. And then a bit of hoppiness hits you. Um, some earthy and grassy notes, which is different for me. I'm, I'm used to picking up on citrus and pine, so they probably used varieties without that citrus and pine, because I can't imagine citrus and pine mixing well with the coffee flavor. And then as the hoppiness fades, here comes this bitter coffee flavor to finish the beer off, and then that coffee finish lingers a bit on the palate. Oh, it's a nice, rounded out set of flavors, and it's um, it's got my attention. Pardon. It reminds me of, um, I think it was Rogue, had the cold brew IPA, which had a really nice, hoppy, pardon, and apparently my liver is trying to throw hiccups at me here. Uh, the, but the cold brew IPA had a really nice um, hoppy character to it followed by that coffee flavor. 
it was a little more bold than this, but um, overall a similar, similar idea. Concept. Concept was the word I was looking for. But really nice and well put together. Those earthy notes and grassy notes in the hops are really surprising me. And again, I, I'm not used to picking up on them. I seem to be keyed to citrus and pine. And then for them to be followed by a nice, bitter, like, uh, freshly ground coffee flavor. That's interesting and different. Um, I think I gotta put this on par with the Spruce Locker. It's, it's a nice four and a half out of five. If it were unique in the beer world, I would say it's a full five out of five. Um, but the fact that it's similar to something I've had before, while being distinctly different from that, let's let's make that clear. This is not the same as the other hoppy coffee beers that I've had. It's just similar. <clears throat> And that's why it's a four and a half out of five because it is it is standing out as being different it's just not unique or making me go wow i've never had that kind of experience before so a nice solid four and a half out of five for this pretty damn good so all in all no big surprises in the uh, the fall pack and I say that because two of them are really well known for me. Anybody who's watched these reviews before wasn't surprised by how I rated the Boston Lager or the Oktoberfest. Uh, those are pretty typical. Black Lager, decent beer. Pumpkin Ale, decent beer. The Spruce Lager and the uh, Coffee Pale Ale being a couple of standouts in this pack. Both coming in at the 4.5 out of 5 versus the 3.5 or the expected results of a, a four and a five for the other the Boston lager and the uh, Oktoberfest all in all really well run great pack of beers perfect for uh, fall perfect for sitting around a fire any other time of the year just really solid offerings um, I love fall beers and uh, with so many wins and hits on the on their hands here, I'm looking forward to seeing what Sam Adams brings for the winter pack this year too. But uh, as I said before, it's just one person's opinion. Hit me up down in the comments, the email link down below. We'll hear what you have to say about these beers. While you're down there, don't forget to like and share the video, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way, you'll get notifications whenever I post a new video. Until next time, folks. Thanks for checking out this one. Cheers.